Hello, my dears, Daniela here, and welcome to another episode of the Spa Marketing Made Easy podcast. Happy February to everybody. This is such a fun month in the spa world. My newsfeed is just completely filled with chocolate facials or champagne facials, all things like that, because Valentine's Day and spa go hand in hand. So I hope that you guys did your Valentine's Day promotion planning a few months ago and that you're in full swing. You really need to do that ahead of time so that you can get those appointments being booked. But if you haven't done that already, there is no better time to start than right now. But that's actually not the topic of today's episode. Today, I have my friend and mastermind sister, Tara Bowman, joining me on the show to talk about the business map method. Now, this is a signature process and framework that she created, and I personally believe is essential if you're ever planning to sell your business, look for investors, or even get a loan from a bank. So I went through Tara's program myself, and I created a business map for Addo Aesthetics. I loved it so much. I invited her to come into our Growth Factor program and do a workshop for our members so they could each create their own maps. I'm kind of obsessed. (laughs) And now Tara is joining me here to talk about her business map method and walk you through what exactly this magical document is. Now, before we jump into the interview, let me just give you a brief bio so you know a little bit more about my awesome friend, Tara. So Tara is a business coach and strategist for women entrepreneurs. She created the business map method where she helps women create a plan that moves their ideas into action. Love that. She's from Houston, Texas, and has a huge passion for traveling and loves coming home to her family, including her spoiled dog and cat. Now, one thing that I want to make clear before jumping into this episode, I said that this is an essential document. If you're ever planning to sell your business, look for investors or get a loan from a bank. Yes, I believe that's 100% true. But if that's not you, this is still a super valuable document that will give you so much clarity in your business. You know, I was talking with Tara about what we wanted to do on this episode and really what I think makes the business map so, so powerful. And there's so many times in business where we're like, okay, what's our why? We, you know, we're thinking about our why and then what's our branding and how are we going to market and who's our ideal client? You'll do these little exercises or workshops to figure out those things, but they're, they get lost in you know, some file on your computer or in one of your 27 journals that you're taking notes in. And you don't have all of this information in one place. And that's what's so powerful about the business map method is that it really takes all of these really important things, these this important work that you're doing to develop your business, to develop your brand, and puts it together in one document that really just allows you to see the forest through the trees. That's what I loved about it. So grab a pen and paper. (laughs) You're going to want to take some notes for this one. It's such an awesome episode. So without further ado, let's go ahead and play that episode. All right, Tara, I'm so excited to have you on the Spa Marketing Made Easy podcast. Welcome. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. I just adore what you're doing and I am like such a fan. So I'm honored to be on your podcast. Oh my gosh. So I know I gave a little, a brief intro in, you know, in the intro of the podcast, but you are a business coach. You are the founder of the business map method, which for me, I was like, when you, when you were talking about it in our mastermind, I was just like, oh my gosh, I love this woman. I need to learn more about whatever this business map is. This is so super cool. So I wanted to bring you on to really kind of dive into what this business map that you've kind of created and trademarked and perfected, what is it? How can it help 
business owners? Sure. So a business map really is the how-to guide to run your entire business. So if what happens, what I've seen with a lot of entrepreneurs is we just jump into it. And while that's great, and I like envy people that can just jump into just starting their business and getting out there and, and doing the grind and whatnot, rarely I found people take, they don't take time to step back and say, what is this business going to look like in five years. So the business map really is, it becomes the bird's eye view of where you're going in all areas of your business over the next five years. I find that, so when I'm working with, with coaching clients, one of the questions that I put on the intake form is where do you see yourself in five years? Mm. And everybody has the, they'll write like, I don't know why this question is so hard or I have no, you know, it's, it really is challenging to I think a couple of things. One, allow yourself to dream big, right? And totally, say, like, what is possible for me? And and two, just to like so often we get in this hustle mentality. What's going to get me the most amount of money the quickest? Right. My clients. Right. My clients like lash lifts. My clients like spray tans. My clients. Well, what do you like? Right. You know, what right. Do you like to do, and what do you want to build? You know, like. That I think is a really important piece because other way, otherwise you're not creating a business that supports your dreams. Yeah. You're creating a patchwork. Yeah. Of- I call it a Frankenstein business model. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Where it's like, ching, 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 ching. yes. Yeah. Because there's no shortage of opportunity, right? I mean, there's people that like, I mean, I don't even know some of the businesses that are out there, but there's some pretty crazy businesses like, wow, you can make money doing that. Good for them. You know, but like in spa, we have, even within spa, which we feel like is a pretty niche industry, right? Mm -hmm. There's, there's medical spas, there's day spas, there's wellness centers, there's solo estheticians. I mean, there's all of that. And then, then there's like lash artists, you know, microbladers, all, all those different niches yeah. that you can break down even further. So I think that in order to truly create a business that supports your dreams, having something like the business map and taking the time, slow down before you speed up right? to really understand where it is that you're going is, is so, so important. Yeah. And one thing I, I often say is like all my stuff in my entire business is branded around travel. I love to travel. So uh, what I relate a business map to is if you're in, if you're an airplane, like your airplane can go far and can go at a, at a good speed, but sometimes you have to land it for maintenance and you have to have like a crew work on it so that you can go faster later and you can go further, you know, and oftentimes we don't give ourselves that time for maintenance, you know, even in the spa industry, right? It's like, you know, I grew up, uh, my mom was a solo owner of a a barbershop, the busiest barbershop in in my hometown. And I mean, never once did she take time off for her. Um, You know, my, she was only, she just did men's hair, but you know, my brother always had a great haircut because he was like the, um, you know, walked her brand, but, you know, oftentimes you neglect yourself. And so in, that also shows up in your business too. And we don't stop and just take time to think about where do we want to take this thing? Because we see ourselves as awesome service providers. We're really good at what we do. But when we're starting our business, I want every woman to think that they are also a CEO and that they can build a business that scales so they don't have to work so hard. And, you know, and, and over time, as, as I've seen my own mom who, you know, is on her feet many, many hours a day, you know, five to six days a week, you know, it, it's, it takes a toll on your body. So you have to kind of yeah. think, you know, with the end in mind, you know, like our amazing, is it Stephen Covey says yeah, that it's, the end yes. And that, that's how I see business. So let's see, where do you want to go with this long term around, you know, do you want to sell it someday? Do you want to legacy it down to um, one of your children or maybe an amazing employee? And then you get some sort of revenue share when you want to retire. Because at some point we're going to stop working no matter how much you love what you do. And so that's what I see with a business map is, is having that, you know, at least look out five years, if not, you know, if not longer. And if that's hard to, and if that's hard to see, 
then that is probably your greatest work that you need to do so that you know where you're driving and not just getting up every day, you know, doing the hustle because it, it will exhaust you. And I know both you and I believe that we don't want entrepreneurs to burn out because, no. you know, and especially in spa, because like you were saying, you know, very similar to, um, cosmetology or like hairdressing, um, your body can only, I mean, a full time for an esthetician is 32 hours. Yeah. And some, you know, most estheticians are working three to four days a week. And that's, that's plenty because yeah. it is, you're using your hands, you're sitting at different angles. Um, especially if you're doing lasers all day, lasers mm-hmm. are like a very heavy device a lot of times when you're in awkward positions and it really can affect your body. So it yeah. is important to have some sort of you know, I always talk about having multiple streams of revenue, right? Sure. So you're not just solely focused on if you don't perform treatments, mm-hmm. then no money comes in. Right. Which you is, all, which is always really scary. And, and I totally agree. And the one thing, cause I work with clients too, that they're like, well, I do this and then I do this. And then I'm also a, a speaker and then I want, you know, and it's like, okay, cool. Like, let's see how we can bring all this under one umbrella and put that in your map. And instead of calling it, you know, multiple businesses, like, let's just think of it as you Inc with multiple divisions under that, right? Mm -hmm. So that you can roll all that up to maximize your time and make as much money as you can. So let's try and paint a picture for our listeners of what actually the business map is. Like it's a document, right? Yeah. Yes. Types of things are you including in this document? I know you said it's like kind of like your five-year plan. Yeah. 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 Business plans always kind of freak people. Oh, yes. (laughs) And I mean, when I first started, so I've been doing this for 10 years. And prior to that, I was a, a consultant for, you know, some of the greatest consulting companies. Um, and I love that work. Um, but then prior to, before I stepped into that, I had my own uh, boutique and, you know, even to get a business loan, I had to do the big, huge business plan, right. Mm -hmm. Um, to be taken seriously. So, so I had done all that work, you know, and that's great for banks and investors and whatnot. Um, so I always had that, you know, I went through that and I was like, when I ended up, creating the very first map, which was honestly my own, because I, it was a need. I, I, I needed it because I was suffering from lack of clarity. So the business map really for me, so 10 years ago, like many entrepreneurs, I had a practice business and I knew I wanted, I was transitioning out of corporate and I knew I wanted to serve women entrepreneurs as my niche. And you know, I would talk to people and they'd be like, oh, you know, uh, so you want to be a business coach? I'm like, no, I just want to mentor women. Like I have all this awesome experience from the corporate world. I want to just, I just see so much opportunity out there uh, to be able to give them this awesome like strategy information and how to build a business, but give it to them in a less expensive way, but high impact. And like, oh, so you want to be a business coach? And I'm like, (laughs) I don't know what that is. Like, and you know, because in the corporate world, you're like, you don't even know what happens and what goes on in the, I call it the wild, wild, West of entrepreneurship. So sure enough, I also, I have a IT degree as well. So, you know, I talked to somebody, they're like, oh, you need a website. Oh, I need a website. Cool. You know, I'll just code my own website, like whatever. So I did that. And then someone's like, who did your website? And I'm like, why did it? Will, will you do my website? And I was like, okay. You know, and next thing I know, I have a website business and I'm like, this is not what I wanted. So that was my practice business. And I had a team in the Philippines and, you know, and and for me, I just, I totally envy the people out there that can do these and scale them. I couldn't figure out how to scale a website business, but you know, even getting up to, I think I was charging like 3000 a website. I couldn't, uh, no, no matter how many more I sold, I was still making the same profit. So I was like, okay, this is crazy. I'm working more hours than I did in consulting for less money. And um, so I need to wind this down. So I was able to rehome and soft land my team from the Philippines. And, um, and, and then I just, I had to sit with it and just be like, what's next? So that's when I was like, you know, what do I really want to do? And it was, I wanted to help the women and this whole concept of, oh, you want to be a business coach? You want to be a business coach? And I was like, okay, maybe I do. Like, let me check this out. And the more I looked into it, I was like, yeah, that's totally what I did. So it's kind of this, uh, this strange thing of like a business, because it took me years before. I I mean, I was like 
spa coach. <laughs> yes. Marketing strategist. Me too. Mentor. So, yeah. yeah. There's all these different things because you mm-hmm. don't really know what to call yourself. Right. Um, right. But it's, I mean, essentially like the more you get into it, you know, like all the big businesses mm-hmm. have coaches. All yeah. Presidents have coaches. Oprah coaches has a coach. have totally. Like, coach, everybody has a yeah. coach. Yeah. And you don't really see that. No. You know, yeah. you don't. You don't realize that until you're into it. I had no yeah, idea. I, me neither. No idea. I mean, is executives have coaches that help them on their career path. I mean, it's just like, it's this whole like hidden industry almost. And so I did it pretty quick. I like grew my business to six figures. I was coaching 30 women a month at a lower price point. And, um, I was on the headset all day. <laughs> um, you know, like four days a week, back to back to back. I was having the same conversations over and over. And, you know, four people would fall off. So I had to get four new people the next month. Like it was a hustle and grind. And I thought, so this, there's gotta be more, right? And so I burnt myself out because I did that for about a year and a half and was like, okay, whoa, what's going, like, I gotta rethink this. And this is where I decided to gift myself um, a few months just to, figure out where the heck I was going. So probably like a lot of, of your, uh, you know, spa owners and estheticians, it's like, you're just in the daily grind. Like you're just, I couldn't call in sick. No, yeah. I couldn't call in sick. I couldn't, cause that would be like eight women. I would disappoint the next day. So it was just like, how can I do this in a way that doesn't burn me out, but allows me to actually reach more women. So took the few months, built out what is now the very first business map. And sometimes I look at it just for fun because it's like so cool how it's evolved. So that was probably about um, five or six years ago that I built the first one. So I had it and the name of my company is Navigation Forward. So it was like the Navigation Forward you know, business map. And it had seven sections. The first section is all about I had to get clear on my foundation So what I found I was doing was spending a ton of money trying to plug holes in areas of my business strategy that I hadn't thought through. And so what ended up happening is if I needed help in marketing, I would go find somebody or take a course or buy a course. Let me say I'll buy a course. I wouldn't necessarily always take them all, but, um, you know, I would get down a learning hole of like learning how to do Facebook ads, right? Mm -hmm. And then it's like you do that and you're like, well, you also need to be able to leverage Instagram. So off I'd go into these black holes, which was not contributing to increasing my profit. So I was like, okay. Um, and then you had that Frankenstein business. So I had it too. (laughs) And so I, uh, finally I was like, okay, if I have to get really clear, what does it look like? I became my own best client, which I think a lot of us need to do sometimes be your best client, give yourself as much attention and focus as you would somebody who paid you. Right. Cause oftentimes it's easier to work for someone else because I don't know, there's less fear. There's less you know, all the stuff that comes up when you open your own business. Um, I often say, if you ever want to know your personal personal issues or all the things inside, uh, go open your own business because it all comes yeah. to the surface, right? All of a sudden, I'm like, yeah, I'm getting woo-woo. I'm like, um, you know, taking mindset training, like, you know, money, whatever, like all your issues come up from childhood. So, you know, you gotta, we all have our journey. This is, this is my two things that I've learned from being an entrepreneur is number one, the greatest lesson in personal development is mm-hmm. entrepreneurship. 100%. And that was my life until yep. I had a kid. And yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Second, yeah. <laughs> so my daughter is my greatest lesson in personal development. Oh, I love it. It, it's so, it brings all the deep, dark stuff totally out of you and yep. shows how you show up mm-hmm. as a leader. Shows yes. how you show up in stressful situations. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's and and what I'm noticing, you know, right now. Um, we have a esthetician business book club in our okay. free Facebook group, and we have been talking a lot about money and yeah. books about money. Oh yes. Because there is so much emotional baggage, mm-hmm. especially with women mm-hmm. that is tied to money. Yeah. And either you- overspend or you don't spend enough. <laughs> it's like, right. it's gotta be balanced. Like, how am I? am I successful? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, what's my, am I secure? Like it's security. Right. It's like worth, you know, like, oh, my business didn't hit X goal. So yeah. then I'm a bad person. Right. Um, you know, I mean, there's so many things. So, yeah. um, 
Yeah, super important, I think. Absolutely. Too. We. Uh, I'm going to be writing an article and, and one of them for a, a big publication. And it's around why women don't pay themselves in their, in their business. They don't give themselves a salary. Most women don't. And it's like when I got to the root of why, and I had to go survey a bunch of women and, you know, it all rolls up into, I'll, I'll ruin the article for everybody, but it's like, it roll, it rolls up into my business is struggling. So I need to struggle too. And, and that's when we think about it, it's, that's crazy. But I mean, I didn't pay myself a consistent salary for years. You know, it's like you take, uh, maybe the minimum or you pay your business expenses and women are really good at spending what they make. Right. And then the leftover, maybe that's what you would give or say, I'll just do a draw when I need it, you know, and um, instead of being proactive and taking it um, off the top, which I think one of your book club is profit first, right? Yep, I think I saw that on Instagram. Yeah. That's a great book. And, and that's what that whole book goes into, but yeah, it's, it's paying yourself first. Absolutely. Is the most valuable, but yeah. I, I think it's pretty normal for women to, to, I mean, I didn't pay myself for years either, mm-hmm. you know, and it's like, well, I've just got to get the the business going. Yeah. I've got to do all this stuff. And, and I was actually talking with one of my really good um, girlfriends who owns a seven figure business. Mm -hmm. And she was like, look, unless you're planning to sell your business, yep, you need to take all the money out of it that you can for yourself. Yes. If you're planning to sell your business, obviously you want the net profit at totally, you want, Mm -hmm. you know, like all of these kind of things, but if it's just for you and nothing, it's like, you take that money because you're not going to have this big, like Google's not going to come in and buy, and, and buy your business yeah. from, and if they do, or any company comes in to want to buy your company, they're going to look at how much did you pay yourself, right? Because right. like they want to be able to pay themselves too. So yeah, I mean, and yeah, and, and that's something we don't get. And I think there's this whole philosophy out there is it takes three years and now it's five years, you know, of struggle before you can enjoy the fruits of your labor when, you know, that's just, yeah. But then, you know, you've got like most businesses fail too. So it's like, you know, all these bad statistics out there are keeping our mindset to where we can't be profitable year one. Like I a hundred percent was with my one-on-one coaching business, you know, I, yeah, the website thing was like, I made profit, but it just, there was no scalability. So I was like, what's the point of this? So, yeah. So I totally agree. Um, So let's go back to the business map. You were saying the first section is about your foundation. Absolutely. Really just understanding. So like your mission, your vision, your values, like that kind of stuff. Yeah. So mission, vision, values, um, who do you serve? I call her your perfect customer profile. Some people, you know, call it target audience, whatever, but you got to get really clear on that. Um, one thing that I do that I've never seen done before that was really important to me was ha- adding strategic give back right into your business foundation as well. So um, I found, especially working with women entrepreneurs, that if you can build some sort of give back and contribution to the world, you'll work a little harder. You'll be a little more comfortable selling your product, right? Um, on, and your service because that money isn't, it's not for you. It's not for, oh, Tara Bowman's getting rich on this. No, I want to help make more money so I can give more money to help build the school in Rwanda. You know, like it's, you add your thing that feels good right up front into the foundation versus waiting until later. You know, I saw this like common thread amongst these billionaires, right? Like they start these mega companies, you know, Oprah, we saw it with her too. Like you, they start their company, they make tons of money, but then when they want to either retire from the board or step down from CEO, um, they, what do they do? They all go work for their foundation and that's their greatest love. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, that's their purposeful work that they're doing later. Why not just embed? You don't have to be full time in it, but you know, you do something that is passion that, drives your passion right in, right up front in your business map. So then you can leverage that as uh, marketing and PR as well, which is really cool. And that can be something, I mean, for us, we've, we've always had a giving back component. We actually never really talk about it, but mm-hmm. um, even my first year in business when I did $20,000, which mm-hmm. was nothing, mm-hmm. we 
um, gave micro loans to Kiva. Mm-hmm. So we yeah, me too. Yes. $25 loans. And yeah. I would always choose um, women entrepreneurs in the beauty industry. Oh, I love that. And yeah. So we, you know, we've done that and we've continued to donate and reloan and all of that. But we've done that. And then we have um, also sponsored a beautiful little girl in Uganda. Mm. So we sponsor, she's an orphan. Yeah. And so we sponsor her through her whole, from eight until she yep. finishes, yep. you know, but it's just like, it's beautiful when you have the ability mm-hmm. to, to do those things yeah. in your business. And it, totally. And it's doing it. And it's also the joy of like, sh- when you share it, you're bringing awareness and you're leveraging your platform so that more people know that they can do that too. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I grew up, one of the mindset things that I had, like, I would assume like a lot of people was, you know, money doesn't grow on trees, you know, rich people, not that they're evil, but, oh, they're rich and, you know, like whatever. So yeah, they're greedy. Yeah. Yeah, Greedy is a great word for it. And, and then I thought, wow, when I got into this entrepreneurship world, I have never met nicer people that the more money they make, the more they were able to give away. And so that was something that was like, it has to be part of the business map. So strategic give back is, is a crucial thing in there as well, as well as your branding. So, and branding from creating your own brand style guide, being clear on your colors, your fonts, your, um, you know, all, all the things that all the, things. the patterns, the, yeah. yeah, all that stuff, not just the logo. Right. Um, so then once we have the foundation in place, it really becomes about now that you know, kind of who you're selling to, um, it comes into what are you selling? So your offers. So, you know, what, what specifically, you know, what services and products do you sell and at what price points? And I like to lead with what is something you're known for? So I call it your signature offer. And then you have your upsell and your downsell because there's always going to be people who want more. And then there's always going to be people who are not quite ready to invest in your signature offer, but want to try you out at some level. And then you can promote them up. We always talk about you have to have your niche that you're yeah, known for. Totally. Right. And you can still offer other services. Mm-hmm. You can still have other things on there. Yeah. But all of your outgoing marketing materials, your branding, everything needs mm-hmm. to be like if you're a wax specialist, yeah. it needs to be all about waxing. Yep. Because if someone's going to Google you yeah. and you want a Brazilian, mm-hmm. they're not going to go to a jack of all trades. Right. Specialized. Specialized. Resilience, right? <laughs> exactly. Like, and then yeah. once you get them on the table, then it's like, oh, well, oh, yeah. we also so do like laser. Or we, or yes. Like you know, yeah, all yeah. Those other things. Yeah. I know. And it's, we overcomplicate business strategy sometimes so much and try to be everything to everyone because we don't, I think, especially as you work with a lot of women too, it's like as women, we want to be pleasers. Um, and then next thing you know, you've invested in a $20,000 machine that you're like, I got to pay the loan. I got to pay on this, but how do I embed that into my business model? So in a business map, we'd say, okay, that's going to be in a parking lot. You know, we can grow to that later, but we really focus in on, you know, your signature offer, you're up and you're, you're down, which are usually targeted to the same perfect customer profile, right? Uh, Maybe she's just a little bit further along in her life or, or whatnot. So And then once you have your offers in place, it's about, you want to know, okay, now that I have these, how am I going to sell them? So we need to have a sales strategy in place that works for you. So there's a lot of people, a lot of books, a lot of information out there on sales. And, you know, and this was something I realized when I was in the corporate world, I was like, wow, like I I was able to double my salary on commission, you know? So if you're selling a million dollar deal and you get 10% of that, that's pretty awesome, you know? But what I was good at was, I guess, upselling or once I was in, you can prove your worth. And then people are like, oh, and then they'll refer you and they'll, you know, that's what I was good at. I wasn't good at getting new leads. I didn't know how to do that. So when I got into business, I was kind of like, oh, you have to do lead generation. Mm -hmm. So, and the sales side, so I learned how to do that, but I learned to do it in a way that was not congruent with who I was in my heart. So some women can get on the phone and say, okay, oh, you want to book and buy this package? Sure. What credit card? Let's take your credit card and paid and done. Right. I wasn't that type of person. I'm a processor. I needed to think about it. Yeah. That's more how spa is too. Like so many, because the relationships that we have with our clients are 
they're very, very special relationships. Mm -hmm. Like women come to us with all their vulnerabilities. Totally. I don't like this about myself Yeah. or I'm going to show you an area where you're going to wax or get so close that only my partner is ever there. You know, it's right. It's very very intimate, very intimate, very vulnerable relationship. And so we have to be very respectful of that and make sure that our clients never feel like they're like, we're being pushy or salesy Mm -hmm. or just like, you know, making them feel uncomfortable in any way. And so many estheticians are such caregivers Yes, that they just want to like, they would just take care of the world. Yeah. You know? Right. But we do have to, um, I talk about lead generation so, so much and whether, whether it's, uh, Facebook ads, whether it's Google ads, whether it's Yelp, Groupon, Mm -hmm. you know, all of these different things, you have to have some way Mm -hmm. that you're getting new people in the world. Absolutely. Absolutely. You cannot rest on your laurels. Um, and, and you, and have a sales process that you're comfortable with because you know, you're giving an extreme value they're comfortable with, right. That they're not feeling always sold to. And, you know, and I just had that aha when you were saying that around the uh, vulnerability that you're, uh, clients experience on a daily basis with that intimacy. And essentially, maybe that's where some of mine came from too, was, you know, I have the gift or whatever, I don't know what you would call it, but the ability to, when I'm talking to women, just even in a consultation, hey, where do you, where are you at in your business and where do you want to go? Right. And they'll tell, you know, I mean, they'll, nobody can, nobody asks women that. So then, you know, and I deal with two types of people like, oh, everything's perfect. I just want to go to the next level, you know, or, you know what, I'm about ready to throw in the towel and go back to corporate. This is so much harder than I thought. I'm like, okay, th- those are the women I meant to rescue. So I'm like, okay, let's talk about this. And how can we step you through it so that you feel that you at least have your next best step, right? Mm-hmm. And it may be a, a business map. It may be working in, with me in a mastermind. It could be whatever. but uh, Or it's just maybe like, hey, you need to know, Daniela. Like, that's what I'm committed to. And it's giving women their next step. So, so yeah. So, I was like, oh, my gosh. So, and maybe that's why I always felt like giving an offer and taking a credit card is just – it wouldn't feel good. I too want women, it's too transactional. I want women yeah. to think on it and, and feel comfortable and be ready. Like I want to work with women when they're ready. It's building the relationship. Totally. Which yeah. Is essential. And so. yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So pricing, lead yep. generation. Yep. And- so then we've got, you know, your sales process, like how you move them from, I'm, oh, I've heard about you to giving you money. What money, how you take payment. Like you would be surprised when I've been out speaking and I, I was speaking in New Jersey once and a woman came up to me. She's like, Tara, I'm just not making money in my business. I'm like, well, what's going on? What do you do? Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, well, if I wanted to hire you now, how would that work? And she's like, well, I I don't, I don't know. I'm like, well, if I want to give you a credit card, which you, she's, I go, here's my card. She's, oh, I don't have that set up. That's, I don't know how to do that. I'm like, well, what about cash? Oh, I don't want to take cash. Like, uh, like, what about a check? Well, what if it bounces? Like she hadn't even worked through and m- many women haven't how they want to be paid in order of preference, right? It's like my women, even though a lot of them have the cash just to pay and do an EFT, they will like want to do a credit card because they want the travel points because I work with yep. travelers a lot. So, you know, and that works for them. So then that needs to work for me. And I'm not going to charge you the 3% service charge, right? It's like, that's a cost of doing business. You have to be really clear on how you accept money and what your preference is, right? Um, and then after you're clear on your sales process, how you step people from, oh, I've heard about your spa to buying you know, the package and and whatnot and how you transact, we go into how are you visible? So your marketing strategy, uh, your referral program, right? Because that's part of your marketing strategy. So, um, you know, we create a customized referral program that works for you and your clients. And then um, because 85%, it's probably higher even in, in your industry, 85% of new leads for small businesses come from referrals. So why would we not have some sort of vehicle to help them leverage that? People always say, oh, I want word of mouth, word of mouth, word of mouth. Yeah. The thing in spa that is a little bit tricky is, is 10 years ago, everything was word of mouth. Yeah. But now so much has moved to Mm -hmm. social media and we still, word of mouth is a huge piece Mm -hmm. of it. A hundred percent. Yeah. 
But what happens is even if like, if I was like, oh, Tara, there's this really amazing spa in Houston. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, I mean, maybe if it were coming from me, since you'd yeah, me, Yeah, I'd be like, which one? <laughs> <laughs> I'm booked. <laughs> you want to know. Yeah. And you're going to go online and you're going to look at them. Totally. You're going to say, all right, do they have good reviews? Mm -hmm. You know, can I see a picture of the person who's going to be working on this? Yeah. Do they specialize in this? You know, I want to see what the spa looks like, you know, like, yeah, is you it? Know all yeah. So it's not just this blind like, sure, I'm just going to make an appointment with so-and-so. Right. It's, I'm going to, yeah, I'll go be a lead, you know, yeah. I'll go to the website, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to just, you know, blindly book an appointment yeah. without, without something. Like, something. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So it's some social proof of some, or some visual proof. And yeah. when I do a marketing strategy, I break it into three sections. So I've got what's called the, you know, the traditional marketing channels, which, you know, all these, the three breakdowns of the marketing strategy, they can, the one element alone could be a single spa's like entire strategy, right? Like traditional marketing still works. And that could be um, being a speaker, that could be just networking, it could be, um, it's doing those things that are more cheek to cheek. Sometimes it's a billboard, right? Like it's, it's kind of the old school techniques that yeah. worked for years. And then I, we break it into um, your online strategy. So what does it look like from how are you generating leads online and, and booking appointments online? And then uh, the third thing is, is social media. So I actually break out online and social media because, you know, they, they just have their own um, conversions and whatnot and how, you know, they all interact, interrelate to each other, but yet they're different. So, um, and you need to show up where your clients are. And well, it's a mix of where your clients are and the, the medium that you enjoy. So if you don't have a clue about Pinterest and you would never get on, get on Pinterest and your clients are on Pinterest, okay, but, you know, instead go work on the platform that you like and your clients are hanging out anyway. So, um, so then after we do the visibility strategy, which is your marketing plan and your, um, your referral program. It's about creating that experience. So customer experience, client experience is super important. So that's from the minute they transact with you, what needs to happen when you're onboarding them, right? And then what do you do to deliver your services? And then what is the basic like, you know, uh, and then we put in wow. So what do you do to go above and beyond? You know, the wow, you know, the wow customer service that makes people go, that's unexpected. Not every spa does that. I like that. And then lastly, you have a, your checklist around what you do when you transition that person. So, you know, after their package is out, what needs to happen, right? Like the step-by-step. -step. So the client retention really for spa. retention. Yeah. And how are you going to re-engage them? So yeah, we've got that side. And then, um, then the last, the sixth part of a business map is your dream team and who's on it, what their roles and responsibilities are and your staff expectations. And so, you know, when we get through this, the six strategies that are built into your map, it becomes like a either 48 to 52 page guide that really becomes a mix of a, a training manual meets strategy meets um, how to guide. Like it's, it's, not like a business plan. You could take it to the bank. I mean, you overlay some financial projections, you you would be wowed, but like, or, you know, you would wow any investors, but, um, you know, it, it's really more when you have that in place, you're like, you can sit back. And when I've presented them to women, you know, after um, I've done theirs or they do them and, you know, I walk them through and help them improve it. I mean, they'll have tears in their eyes and they're just like, oh my gosh, this all makes sense now because they so have clear. to see that. Yeah, it's so clear that the that the rush of, um, and I'm not like a big crier. So at first this was like kind of freaking me out because it was starting to be a thing. Every time I present, <laughs> cry, and I would be like, um, and it was just, it was just a release of emotions of like, oh my God, I see how all this comes together now. And, well, and I think that's the thing because you'll hear in business, like you've got to know your why, you've mm -hmm. got to know your brand, you know, but it's yep. like, all right, well, I spent, you know, 
four hours working on my why and breaking this down. And I've got that over there. But if you're yeah. not looking at it every yes. day, yes. piece of your, it's like, oh yeah, a few months ago I did my why. And mm-hmm. then last month I did my branding. And yep. this month I did, you know, it's like you're piecemealing everything. Yes. You yeah. just like take a moment. Yeah. And what I loved about this, um, this business map, and you kind of alluded to it a second ago, is like the value that it brings to your business. Mm-hmm. Should you ever want to sell? Yeah. Should you ever want to find an investor? Should you mm-hmm. ever want to get a loan from a right. bank? Right. Um, you know, there's certain things that you need to have in place mm-hmm. in order to do that. Right. I mean, and, <laughs> we wish that people would just give us millions of dollars and not expect anything for it. No, if they're going to give you money or even their time, maybe you have a silent partner that's going to come in and whatnot. And it's like, they need to, they want to see a plan where are you going with this? Mm -hmm. And I found, especially with the creatives that I work with, is they're so amazing at what they do. And their products and their services need to be out to the world. But it's like, they can't, they they struggle to see the forest through the trees, right? And so what I see the map as, it's almost a couple of women at my mastermind, I, um, that I had in Palm Springs recently, she's like, it's like you're a, it's a bird's eye view of seeing the forest, Right. And then it helps you laser in on those areas that, you know, you have a plan now, but like it helps you laser in on exactly what you need to be doing in your business at that time so that you can get the results. But yeah, investors, anyone, they sometimes, honestly, when I did my map, I um, showed it to my husband. He's like, oh, that's what you're doing. Cause he just thought I was playing around for a while. You know, like, oh, she's going to go back to the corporate world. <laughs> Look at her with her fun business. But um, when I like, showed him the plan, he's like, oh, you know, so sometimes if it's, you know, you need to get some buy-in from a it partner. Clarity. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But especially with spa, you know, not, I don't think as much for a true solo who's mm-hmm. like renting a salon suite and just never wants to have a team and yeah. all of that. That's, that's one thing. But if right. you are, getting to the point where you're hiring other estheticians, you're hiring massage therapists, you're, you're really creating a business. Mm -hmm. In my mind, it's essential that you have a document like this, that you have a a business map to really understand because it will bring so much more value. Yeah, for sure. You know, I've worked with a lot of women who have wanted to sell their business or they've been going through the process of purchasing a business. Yes. You know, all of those kind of things. I've had a lot of experience with that. Mm -hmm. And so I've seen behind the scenes, I've Mm -hmm. seen like what this means and, and the accountants, the lawyers, this is exactly what they want. Yeah, they want to see strategy there. And so how I see a business map is literally pulling all the goodness that's inside of a business owner's brain and putting it on paper because we get frustrated when our employees or our team members or our brand strategist or whoever we hire doesn't understand it because it's like so easy for us. Hello, it's usually tucked in our brain, but we have to get that out and put it on paper Mm -hmm. so that everyone and so everyone else can see it and experience it in a way that isn't it making us have to have the same conversation over and over and over again so we have this page this document I always tell everyone there's a section in the map that's like if you're reading this and you have not signed your confidentiality agreement stop right now and go see the CEO but before anyone reads it they have to sign their non-disclosure their confidentiality because you're laying it all out there for them right? right so that they understand how it all plays together and then uh you know, and then I, it's a living and breathing document. Like my biggest fear when I start doing these and I'm up to almost a hundred of them that I've done personally. And it is like that these are going to go out and drop box purgatory and just sit there. And I'm like, no, these are meant to be living and breathing. You should at least once a quarter be reviewing it um, and updating it because things change. I'll get you 90 to 95% there, (laughs) but over time, things are going to change. You're going to learn things. You're going to grow. You're going to up your prices as you should. So all that stuff needs to be reflected in there. So that's so cool. So, so cool. Okay. So, um, before we go Mm -hmm. any last minute, like what advice would you give to a spa owner, to a business owner who, you know, I know you work with a lot of women who are like, 
ah, I'm just going to go back to corporate. Like <laughs> if you have these estheticians who are like, ah, oh, I just, I can't be a spa owner. I need to just go back. Like, what do you think has been the best piece of advice to stick with it through like the crazy ups and downs of entrepreneurship? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, one thing I think about, and I think about it every day, is um, to not step over dollar bills to pick up pennies. And I think a lot of the times we do that because we're so busy being busy and we think there's a badge of honor that comes with being busy. And, you know, I'm like so anti this whole busy thing. Like when people are like, I would love to go to lunch with you. I know you're so busy and you want to talk. It's like, I'm not busy for things that I value and I value friendships and relationships. Like we can go to have coffee, you know? So it's like, um, so to, so to step back and say, am I working on the things that only I can do in this business? Is there someone or a process or a tool or an app that can save me time so that I'm not going crazy and, you know, put together your ideal work week. And if it's, you want to work Monday, Wednesdays, and Saturdays, and you want to take Tuesdays and Thursdays to be with your kids and, you know, whatever, it's your life. You get to design the business that you love. So Uh take the time to do that and you can fill in the gaps and, you know, the world's not going to end if, um, you know, so-and-so can't get in on Sunday at 6 p.m. when that's your, that's the time you really value with your family. And, you know, and I say that Setting coming, those boundaries. yeah, so boundaries, absolutely. And working on the tasks that you can work on that generate the most ROI and then outsourcing, delegating, or using a tool or an app or process to, um, I know I'm preaching to the choir here with Daniela. It's like, mm-hmm. don't burn yourself out because yeah. that's going to make you want to jump ship. Because sometimes, yeah, it is easy. And the reality is when we have our own business, we don't have the CEO, the board of advisors, the whatever telling us what to do. Like we're left to that. So we have to have an advisor or somebody in our life that's helping guide us too, um, you know, through all that because we can't see it all. Or just being in a community of, of like-minded women that can pull you out of it. So yeah, it's just don't give up, you know, just get smarter. Don't work harder, work smarter. (laughs) That's awesome. Awesome advice. So for our listeners that want to keep in touch with you, find you, follow you, just see what you're up to, where can sure. they where can they find you? Yeah, so on my website is my home base. So it's just terrabullman.com with two ends. <laughs> like we'll, we'll German. All blue, all blue <laughs> yeah. I do own the one end too, but yeah, because everyone misses that double end. But um, so my website, terrabullman.com, and I'm pretty active on Instagram at Tara Bullman as well. So yeah. So those are the two primary places that I hang out. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much for your time. No thank problem. You thank you. Your wisdom. This is such a great idea. I hope that those of you listening or watching will really, you know, take this advice to heart. Um, head to Tara's website, learn more about the business map method. Such a cool thing for spa owners who are really wanting to go to that next level and have that asset in your business because this truly is an asset. So if you want to keep this conversation going, be sure to head over to the Spa Marketing Made Easy Facebook group and we'll catch you on the next episode. 